2 18650 body Cree XHP 35 high intensity LED and a bright blue lighted front switch, the WowTac A4. Welcome back. Today we are going to take a look at a brand new light that is the WowTac A4. WowTac did send me this light for review. Um, and I have reviewed a couple of their other products before, the uh, A1, their everyday carry light, and also their headlamp, which I liked both of those all right. The first thing that really struck me about this light is that is that body. I mean, to me, I haven't seen a light that looked just like that that was any good since, like, you know, Streamlight or something. I really happen to like 218650 lights. I like the extra length on the body. I think it feels good for a handle. Um, also, something I noticed right off is there's no flats on this body. It's just all that good knurling, and I, I really appreciate that. Looking down the barrel, we did get that nice, clean, smooth-looking reflector around our Cree XHP35 high-intensity LED. We also got our anti-reflective coated lens and some pretty good contrast between the bezel and the head and also on the switch we have that nice blue lighted switch. At the tail end we got some pretty decent threads and a nice gold spring. The finish is not my favorite. It's kind of glossy for me, but it does cover everything nicely. I don't see any, you know, even on the corners it's it's pretty well covered. Now, why don't we have a look at it versus some of the industry heavyweights? This is Convoy L6. No, this... This is Convoy S8. This is Convoy C8 Plus. Lumen Top GT Mini and the Ace Beam L16. Now I did check the output of all these hitters side by side just to see what we'd get and as you can see from this chart we had the WowTac A4 coming out on top. At turn on we got almost the advertised 2000 lumens which is beating even the L16 which is also advertised at 2000 lumens. Uh, moving on to the 30 second mark we didn't lose much. All of the lights held up quite well at the 30 second mark, which is a good sign. Moving on to where it says timer settle, that is not where the turbo timer triggered, but where it had completely settled down and I was able to measure the output yet again. This time with the C8 actually coming out on top, just because it has no turbo timer, followed by the A4 and then the L16. Um, the GT Mini, that's uh, that 124, don't worry too much about that. That's pretty lame that it settled to that, I think, but on the bright side, the bright side, this has Narsil, so theoretically we could reprogram that or just eliminate it, so uh, I wouldn't worry too much about that. Now, there is one more very important metric that we do need to consider here, and that's the throw, so that we're comparing apples to apples, so why don't we do that? Okay, this is Herbert. Herbert is a Cyclops, and I made Herbert to help me with this experiment. Um, the reason is that uh, previously when I was doing my uh, Lux experiments, uh, I'd do them off the wall, and I think some of the uh, ambient light bouncing off the wall was kind of skewing my numbers. Um, I didn't do it like this before because these cheap light meters don't have a very good peak hold function and I need to be able to move the, the meter around in the light, but this one has a little bit better uh, peak hold than my last light meter. It does still drop numbers a little bit, but we're going to give it a shot like this and see. Okay, now while Herbert stands at this end of the yard, I'm going to measure off um, 10 meters in that direction and I'll stand down there and we'll see how this goes. Hopefully a lot better with nothing nothing at all around Herbert to have light bounce off of. Okay, so now if all goes well, I'll just uh, do a double test on each light and see what we get. OK, 
Okay, as you can see, when I move the light across the sensor, I do get some peaks, but it doesn't exactly hold those peaks very well. It tends to drop a little bit of the number, and worse still is I can get a peak to hold on the sensor, but then when the light starts moving again, it starts reading all over again. And and this is why I've typically advocated for the wall method because I can just hold the meter there and watch the number sit there rock solid. Fortunately, however, because of running two tests on each light and having the video camera at close range to the meter, I was able to go over the footage and get reasonably accurate and definitely repeatable results. Now you can see on the chart our results yielded by the double test. The WildTac A4 again coming out on top, followed closely by the Lumitop GT Mini. I have to say I am a little bit surprised by this as the GT Mini is a super thrower and direct drive right off the battery. However, I'm going to attribute this gain primarily to its larger reflector. While I will say that its higher output over the Ace Beam L16 is primarily due to the emitter being driven harder, I measured at the tail cap uh, in watts from the L16 we're getting 25.83 and in watts the A4 is doing 33.26, so slightly higher current there, but at the cost of having to carry a two battery light. Okay, user interface, we get clicks for on off. Um, from the on position, if you press and hold, it'll cycle the low, medium, and high modes. From off, if you press and hold, it gives you moonlight, reading mode as they call it on the instructions. A double click from anywhere gives you turbo. If you press and hold from here, it'll give you little ramp down to low, but you gotta let off quick because it'll keep cycling the modes. Um, from turbo, if you double click again, you get strobe. It'll memorize low, medium, and high, but not any of the others. Okay, first the new Convoy C8 Plus. This is the XPL High version that we looked at last week. Now the WowTac A4. As always, uh, for more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. Super thanks for watching and good lucks.